Hi, this is Tom Greenwood from sydneyportraits.com.au and in this clip we're talking about one of my very favourite things which is time lapse. Now in this clip we're going to talk about shooting time lapse and in part two, which you can go to by clicking here, we'll look at putting it all together in post-production using QuickTime Player 7. Now, one of the great things about making time lapse in this digital age is that you really don't need a lot of equipment. So first of all, here's a quick rundown of what you do need. First of all, you need a tripod. Now, the quality of the tripod really depends on the conditions that you're shooting in and the weight of your equipment. If your camera is not too heavy and there's no wind, then a pretty cheap plasticky tripod will be fine. But really, I'd recommend something a bit sturdier, particularly if there's any kind of breeze blowing. As I can't stress it enough, stability, keeping the camera still, is absolutely essential. Next is something I find very hard to say. It's an intervalometer. Now, this is something you plug into your camera. It allows you to control the number of shots and the spaces in between them. After all, time-lapse is really a sequence of still photos taken at regular intervals, and then played one after another very quickly. Now, I picked up my intervalometer very cheaply on eBay. I think it was about $20 or $30. And finally, you need fairly large memory cards because you're going to be shooting a lot of stills and you may well be shooting in raw format. So you need lots of space. I would say 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes. Now, you might be wondering why we don't just shoot some video and then speed it up in post-production. Now, while that's definitely an option and it, it does work quite well, there are some pros and cons. On the positive side, it's very easy. You just set the camera up, press record and let it roll. No fiddling around, working out intervals, how many shots you need, that kind of thing. But on the downside, it means you really can't do long time lapses. One of the beauties of the still image time lapse is that you can do it over hours, you can do it over days, you can do it over weeks or months or years if you like. So speeding up video is good for maybe a minute or two, but beyond that, it really doesn't work. Another downside is while the resolution of video is fine, with still capture, you can get a really high definition and that means when you use the time lapse, perhaps in a video, you can zoom in without any real loss of quality. Okay, so we're out in the field. We have the tripod set up with the camera on it. And the first thing to do is to frame up your time lapse shot. So the important thing is to ensure that there are moving elements in the shot. They don't have to move very fast. Here, for example, we have the clouds in the sky moving slowly. We have the boats on the water and maybe we've got the tide coming in and out as well. Next, we want to make sure we're working on a clean or empty memory card. When it comes to processing the pictures later, as we'll see in the next video, it saves a lot of time if the only images on the card are of the actual time lapse. So next, let's set the ISO, the shutter, and the aperture on the camera. So here I'm going for ISO 100, as it's a pretty bright day. Now I've set this shutter speed to a 30th of a second. I tend to prefer quite slow shutter speeds when shooting time lapse. That way the end result doesn't appear too jerky. There's a little bit of blur which smooths it all out quite nicely. Now for aperture, I really want the view to be sharp from the foreground right to the background. So I'm shooting at f16. Now f8 or f11 would probably work fine as well. But for me to get that slow aperture, I've gone for F16. Now, we also want to decide whether we're going to shoot RAW or JPEG. Now, later when we process the images, we're going to convert everything to JPEG. But I would suggest unless the light is very steady, very constant, I would shoot RAW. That way you've got plenty of flexibility, just exposure. If you have a scene where the sun is dipping in and out of cloud, chances are some of your shots will be either over or underexposed. And if you're shooting raw, that's very easy to fix. But that does mean, again, that you need large memory cards to contain all those raw files. So now we're going to look at the intervalometer. 
and we need to think about the interval between the shots. Now on the back of my intervalometer, I've pasted this very handy guide. Let's take a closer look. So this gives us a rough guide about the intervals required for different kinds of time lapse, different kinds of movement. As you can see, people moving around on a city street tend to move pretty fast, so one second is, is pretty good. That means we would keep the camera firing for about two and a half minutes in order to get 10 seconds of time lapse. Now this is based on a 24 frames per second, so 24 images per second. Now at the other end of the scale, we've got the sun panning across the sky. I'm sure you've seen those shots in, in films or documentaries representing the passing of time or the beginning of a new day, that kind of thing. So if that's what we're shooting, it would be one shot every minute, every 60 seconds for five hours in order to get that 10 seconds of time-lapse footage. So you really need to make an assessment of the moving elements in the shot, how fast they move, and therefore what intervals you require, and also how long you need to shoot for. So now let's set the intervalometer. Now, some of the settings on here we really don't need, so let's keep it simple. Let's ignore delay and long and go straight to interval. And in this case, we're gonna set the interval to three seconds. Next, N for number, so number of shots. We're gonna leave this blank. We're gonna let the camera shoot for as long as possible and we're gonna stop it manually. So we don't need to, to set the number of shots it takes in a sequence. And finally, there's a beep that goes off every time it fires. We don't want that, so we're gonna turn that off. Okay, so finally, we are ready to shoot. So we're gonna press the start button and leave the camera to do its thing. Ah, but one word of caution, don't let the intervalometer just dangle there from the camera. If the wind blows, the intervalometer will flap around and it's gonna shake the camera. So make sure it's secured, perhaps to a leg of the tripod. We're gonna let the camera shoot for about 15 minutes. Now that's it for this clip. If you'd like to see how this time lapse pans out, and how we process the images, how we stitch them together into a single clip, then please go to part two of this time-lapse tutorial. Thank you. Mm -hmm.